Epiphany 6, The Journey into Unknowingness. We have seen that the kings from the east visited the king of westward leading, the full development of the human race. Perhaps by this sixth day of Epiphany they were departing, still in wonder, and musing upon the meaning of these things. It cannot be explained to men but by faith, a lovelier vehicle than experience. Nevertheless, we do live our lives upon the earth, create our caravan, journey into unknowingness, bringing gifts, but being given greater. The world's preparedness for you was never to be. We were sent, not a messenger, but was brought into view the love of the Father, who spared not his Son, but freely bestowed him on men. And Jesus says, I came forth from God, a willingness to be the lamb of sacrifice. Before time was, the Son was delighting in the Father. Also was it known this sacrifice would be given. No eyes can penetrate the mystery of that love and union. We have known not the God that Jesus has declared to us, outside our knowledge. It has given to us the vehicle of faith, which alone lives in that higher realm. The light of your countenance is the light from God, the only way we know of him. Yours was the divine life with God long before your human life with men. Thus the prevalence of your intercession is direct. What is more direct than to die for the cause given to love in war, in marriage, and ultimately for the salvation of the world? You are the eternal Son of God, the Savior of men. We now ask why. Why is the saving of men the crucial element of all the world? It is because God is a fullness, the completeness of which contains the double nature of the Son. You will be glorified in excelsis, in all attributes of your person, among which is perfect human nature, from this goodness comes the creation of men, men which by nature are less than divine, less than God. We are dependent to the Son in ways perhaps similar to the Son's relationship to the Father. We were made to be one, but it is a process of suffering and wisdom. For man the fall into sin and the difficult climb out from it, effected only by the death of the Son. This does not create the union of man and the Son of God. It is your resurrection to new life, which is the basis of our eternality in friendship to God. In adherence to this, the Son suffered his way to everlasting union with the Father, from birth to ennoble humanity, for, to forsakenness, which cannot be explained, for it is not understood. The third and last stage being, a man shares the throne with God. We cannot have imagined nor effected even the remotest possibility of this eventuation. When we look far beyond the manger of Bethlehem into the depths of eternity, we see God so loving the world as to give his son. It is so in the sense not of extreme, but in the sense of the manner of the gift, the Son died and was forsaken by the Father. This miracle of lowliness was completed in ascension and enthronement of the man, Jesus. With it, you drew up the whole earth of creation to a place within your sphere of everlasting life. Both man and his place of habitation are drawn into a fullness of life with God. What say the three kings of this history of redemption? That they watched, waited, and expected the promise of one to come down from heaven. That they lived a journey to find you, you us. That they were in danger from an evil king. That they brought gifts, accepted, but completed by your larger gift, the vision in human life of the infinite God. Amen.